All right, ladies and gentlemen, let me just check the settings. All right. It seems for many people, they have a misconception that Saturn return is always bad. So what is Saturn return? Saturn return means your the transiting Saturn is exactly over your natal Saturn, which means suppose your Saturn in your birth chart is in Aquarius. Now, during transit is also in Aquarius. So this essentially means whoever has Saturn in Aquarius now has started their Saturn return. So does it mean that Saturn return is always bad? Is it always terrible? Is it always going to bring you suffering, misery, <coughs> pain, hardships, difficulties, trials, tribulations, delays? <laughs> well, we have to understand what is the meaning of a planet when it returns? What, what does it mean uh, when you say Saturn return? Saturn return, as you know, technically means a transiting planet is meeting the original planet. It's like that. But what does this mean? Uh, it's very important because we can't just, uh, it, it's not like, you know, one plus one equals two. Oh, yeah, yeah, there was Saturn was here. Now he's coming back. But what do I make of it, right? So does it mean that Saturn's negativity will in increase or does it mean mean that Saturn's um, negativity will reduce or what does it mean, right? So as usual, if you are new to the channel, then please uh, subscribe to it down below and my website for consultations is also down below. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him irrespective of your Saturn return or Venus return. <laughs> so this return happens for every planet almost, right? So, for example, you can have your Rahu return, Ketu return, Mars return. So, whenever any planet is on top of your natal planet, then that's like the return for that planet. But generally, Saturn return is somehow more famous in YouTube. So, therefore, people are always asking. So, when you have Saturn well-placed in your birth chart, what does it mean when you say it's well-placed? Well placed means either the planet is an own sign or it's in multricone or it's in exaltation or it's in a friendly sign. So, of course, if the planet is in a friendly sign, that's good provided it's not debilitated. Or if it is a better than that is a planet in own sign, better than that is multricone, better, better than that, the best is exaltation, of course. So, and on the other side, if a plant is in debility, that's the worst. A little less worse is a planet in enemy sign. So, and then we know that planets, they have uh, certain houses where they get digbal. So, for example, uh, Sun, Mars get digbal, directional strength in the 10th house. Then we have Jupiter, Mercury in the first. Then we have Moon, Venus in the fourth. And we have uh, Saturn that uh, gets the bell in the seventh house. And we know that uh, there are certain planets which uh, there, there are certain conjunctions for certain planets which can uh, be very good for certain area of life or it can be bad for certain area of life. Uh, sometimes, you know, we have conjunction of natural friends you know, and natural enemies, you know, that can make things worse. So, for example, uh, Mercury-Venus conjunction, that's like both are benefics and both are natural friends, right? Uh, but here's the interesting thing. Although we have Mercury-Venus conjunction, it is said to be a good conjunction, but Venus gets debilitated in the sign of uh, Mercury and Mercury gets debilitated in the sign where Venus gets exalted, which is Pisces, right? So, then we have the Navamsha, then we have the Dashamsha. So, then we have certain uh, comprehensive parameters like we have the Lagna Lord, the Sun, the Moon and the Atma Karaka, of course. So, you have to study what exactly is the position of your Saturn, not in transit, in your birth chart. So, for example, if your Saturn is in own sign, 
which is uh, quite the case uh, in the current scenario because uh, if you are having Saturn return now, which means your Saturn is in Aquarius, which is even better because he's uh, in the multicorn sign of Saturn, right? So when you have Saturn in Aquarius, it's a great uh, privilege. It's a great privilege, or you can say advantage rather. Now in your birth chart, but that's not all in all. What if you are Aquarius Lagna and your Shani is in Lagna? Mm -hmm. Because now Shani is in Aquarius. He is giving uh, Mahapurush Yoga, like Shasha Mahapurush Yoga. But the problem is, is he is in Maran Karakstan because for Saturn, Maran Karakstan is the first house. It's like where a planet feels as if he is dying. So it's a very peculiar situation. A planet is in Multricorn, but uh, and adding to Multricorn, he is also in a Mahapurush Yoga. Uh, but he's also uh, in uh, Maran Karakstan, right? And also for Aquarius, uh, Saturn is also the 12th Lord. Do not forget that. So 12th Lord coming to the Lagna and dying. It's, it's a very difficult conjunction to study. But then it depends on, uh, we, on the Nakshatra Lord of Saturn. So for example, if you are Aquarius Lagna and then you have Saturn uh, placed in Aquarius, then you have to see which nakshatra Saturn is placed. So, for example, if Saturn is placed in Chatbisha nakshatra, which is entirely in the sign of Aquarius. So, then this can mean we need to check uh, the placement of Rahu. What is Rahu doing in the horoscope? So, that's like level 2. It's like uh, layer 2. Uh, for uh, predicting because the nakshatra lot gives us the final result. So then when you see uh, the position of Saturn the, in the Lagna chart, then you also see the position of Saturn in the Navamsha, as I said. You know, Navamsha gives, uh, Navamsha is like the fruits. So Saturn is having Mahapurush Yoga in the Lagna Kundalini because he's in Kendra in Multricorn. But uh, what's the strength of this Saturn uh, in the... Navamsha chart uh, and also if you want to talk of specific areas like for property you can see the Chatutamsha or you know, the D4 then Shodashamsha you can see for the like you know, vehicles and then you can see D9 for marriage of course D10 for profession right so what is the situation of Saturn in these, uh, these different divisional charts so once you see all of them then you know where your Saturn is strong and where he's weak, right? Because it will never happen that your Saturn is well placed in all divisional charts. So that's very rare. That will most likely not happen. But the thing is, astrology is uh, beautiful because we can, we, we using astrology, we do not stay in an idealistic world. Many times people say, Oh, my Saturn is exalted here uh, in Libra, you know, in the Lagna chart, but here it is in enemy sign in this divisional chart, that divisional chart, this is good, that is enemy sign, friend sign, uh, whatever. Why Why is it like this? You know, Why is it so confusing? No, actually it's not confusing because that same planet is uh, behaving in a different way, in, uh, in a different area of life actually. So therefore, once you actually analyze the position of Saturn, not just in the Lagna chart, in all the divisional charts, or at least in the primary, these three, the D1, D9, and D10, these three primary divisional charts, especially among the three, of course, D1 and D9. <clears throat> then you look at the flow of the chart. So what is the flow of the chart? Flow of the chart means where are the energies heading to? What is like the final destination of this person? A final destination doesn't mean uh, something to do with uh, the person's profession. Because many times when we say, uh, when I say, you know, oh, what's the purpose of this person? People interpret that as uh, something to do with related to the profession. But actually it's not. Um, I mean, it could be, but that's not necessary. So, for example... Uh, for a person, uh, the profession may be something else and the person may have some other different life purpose. So then you got to see 
is uh, is Saturn assisting in that uh, purpose or he is not assisting? So how will you know that? Well, that requires a comprehensive analysis because for that you have to check how are the planetary energies working in harmony. So for example, uh, if you have Agni Tattva planets like Sun and Mars placed in the 10th house, then it can mean that you like to dominate people, you like to dominate decision making in companies, in organizations. So when you when you have these planets, then it means you would like to lead uh, by your own example. But if Saturn is uh, in a Dustana house, for example, right? You have Sun, Mars in the tenth, and you 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 have Saturn, which is in a Dustana house, and this means that during the Dasha of Saturn, you might be forced to make some decisions which might make you a bit humble, and then then you understand that this Saturn is not assisting me. Um, in power position because this is in a Dustana house primarily. Um, the exceptions can be there. For example, if Saturn is in the 8th and the dispositor of the Nakshatra Lord is in the 10th or 11th, then this can be very good. But generally, Dustanas are not good. Generally, 99% of the times. So, then you know that this Saturn is opposing the power of Sun and Mars. And both are enemies, of course. I mean, Sun... Saturn and Sun, Mars, you know, they, they, they don't gel well. So, <clears throat> once you know this, then you understand fundamentally what is the energy of your Saturn. Because even a Saturn which is in Libra in the seventh house, so if you are Aries Lagna, then Saturn is in Libra, for example. Saturn is not only exalted, he is also in Digbal. And this Saturn may also deviate you sometimes from your work. Why, why do I say this? Because, for example, if you have Saturn in 7th in uh, Libra in Exaltation and Digbal, but you have a very strong 6th house, which shows you know that you should be uh, doing a job. You should be employed under somebody. But then your Saturn Mahadasha starts. And then you become very optimistic for some collaboration, business and all this. But then the problem is, if the whole chart is not supporting, just having an exalted Saturn in the bulb will not help matters. It won't uh, help you much because what the overall chart does not promise is not DA, is it's like saying you do not have it in your DNA. So therefore, it becomes very difficult to do something independently in a particular dasha. Even if a planet is very exalted, you will see that in your experience. <clears throat> so therefore, just because you have an exalted Saturn, it doesn't mean it's good always. Okay, it, it may be good for Saturnian traits, but is it good for your life overall? So <clears throat> then you see this, and then you see uh, which dashas are you running? You know, your Mahadasha, Antadasha, and your Pratyanda is not needed, I feel. So you see your Mahadasha and your Antadasha, that, that will tell you. Uh, that will give you more clues in relation to understanding how uh, Saturn is actually behaving in context of the Dasha Lords. So, for example, if Saturn is uh, indicating something in the horoscope and the Dasha Lords are also indicating something similar, then you know that, oh yes, uh, this Saturn is actually harmonious. This is actually helping me in going towards this direction and of course keeping into consideration other placements of the horoscope. So when you see your dashas, then you will understand how is this Saturn behaving dynamically, not just statically, you know, exalted or debilitated, but how is this behaving uh, in a dynamic fashion uh, which is changing with every antar dasha, every pratyanta. So once you have seen all this, then you come to your transit. So, because see what happens is when the Saturn return is happening for two and a half, three years, your Mahadasha may change in between that time, right? Or your Antadashas might change, most likely they will. And then what happens is you will see that this Saturn return is behaving differently depending on the Mahadasha and the Antadasha that you are in. 
so if in your birth chart your original saturn is harmonious with the energies of the dasha lords then this saturn return will actually help you to fulfill the agenda of the dasha lords because the transits only the only job of transits is to fulfill the job of the dasha lords so the planets whose dashas you are running those those are the main agendas so for example if uh, you are running jupiter mahadasha and jupiter is your seventh lord so your agenda is marriage partnerships wedding or whatever but <clears throat> suppose saturn is in the sixth house so then it is not helping matters it's against so then when you have saturn return then it means getting married may be very difficult that time or your marriage may be in doldrums because now the original energy of saturn is getting reinstantiated so that's how you know if your saturn return will be a uh, good or bad i mean you can't just see and say oh it will be. because see after 30 years uh 28 27 years when you again have your saturn return what happens will the same thing happen well no right because you will have a different mahadasha antadasha that time so always remember predictions in vedic astrology are given on the basis of mahadashas and antadashas and the com the comprehensive analysis from the overall chart without that we do not give predictions just by seeing transits okay so and and the same rule applies for any planet so you are undergoing venus return or you know whatever i mean uh, mars return or any return it can be so therefore do not just judge by uh, some fancy uh, theory that you know saturn return is always bad it's always good so at times it can be good for you good in the sense good good bad not like just a moral in a moralistic sense or in a in just a superficial sense but it can a either aid in the agenda of the mahadasha or it can speak against it okay so that's how you decide if a planet is actually good or bad not just by judging it in superficial terms like you know oh, maybe this will make me rich or this will make me poor okay so that will be all from my side thank you very much for your patience if you like this video then please click the thumbs up and share this with your friends family members and colleagues and if you're new, you have not yet subscribed to the channel, then please subscribe to it down below. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you'll find him. And if you are interested in a consultation from me, then my website is also down below. Thank you.